A new exhibit at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem hosts an unusual pairing of artifacts, ancient Greek mythology, and a modern childhood fairy tale. The story of this exhibition actually starts with an accidental find of a mask of Pan uh, in Israel. Uh, and then we began researching the topic of Pan and realizing that there has never been an exhibition about Pan, the ancient Greek god. Peter and Pan from ancient Greece to Neverland began when creator Rachel Kane Krynin started researching the Greek god Pan and realized there were parallels between the mythological creature and Peter Pan. Well, it's, it's hard to draw uh, identical lines between Pan and Peter Pan, but there's undoubtedly a lot of Pan in Peter Pan. Peter Pan is actually a combination of the features of the ancient Pan being a laminal god, living in the edges, living in the forests, living in a wonderland of sorts, uh, and uh, having one leg in each world. The exhibit begins in the ancient world, introducing the character of Pan. He's part of the entourage of Dionysus, and this altar from Beit She'an shows that exactly. It's dedicated to Dionysus, you can see the dedication here, but on the other facet is a phenomenal portrait of the god Pan. On the other sides are the Tilsoi, which are signs of Dionysus, and the Pan flute, which we all know, which is maybe the most known sign of Pan. It's a bunch of reeds uh, tied together. Interestingly, many of the Greek mythological artifacts on display were excavated in the Holy Land from a cave, now named after the ancient god. In Israel, we are lucky because one of the most famous sites uh, is dedicated to Pan. It's in the north of the country. It's called Banias, origin originating from the name Paneas. All the vessels that you see here were found just at the entrance to the cave. The worshippers come to the cave. The feasts of Pan take at least 48 hours. People don't come just for a moment for a worship, but it's actually an ongoing party. The exhibition then leaps a few centuries, landing in the industrial age of London, when Peter Pan was written in the early 1900s. The story of Peter Pan actually begins with James Matthew Barry, um, coming from Scotland, a genius playwright and author uh, that actually invents Peter Pan. Uh, and Rachel, through her uh, research of Pan, suddenly uh, connected the idea of Peter Pan to Pan. And everyone we tell that to of our colleagues in ancient uh, Greek and Roman art is astounded because people don't usually connect these two characters. The rest of the exhibit explores this theory that Barry took inspiration from the Pantheon for his famous character of the child who never grows up. Pan is taking souls or accompanying souls to the next world. Peter Pan is taking children to Neverland. What is Neverland? Where is Neverland? Uh, are you allowed to come back from Neverland? These things hover uh, above the sea. From the Holy Land to Neverland, the exact inspiration for Peter Pan remains a mystery, but the Israel Museum gives a unique perspective, bringing Peter Pan's youthful imagination to the world of archeology. span